there are lots of levels to this question of anger. Um, the bottom line is that it's not considered healthy or helpful to judge what we're feeling and to say I shouldn't be feeling this. Uh, because in no way is that going to provide an environment that's onward leading. You know, that's just like a downward spiral where we're in a, a form of battle with ourselves. For my book, I was working on a, kind of a little chapter on an inner critic. And uh, people were saying to me things like, um, how do I get rid of the inner critic? How do I uh, annihilate the inner critic? How do I silence the inner critic? And I would say, it's kind of harsh, maybe. You know, like silencing the inner critic reminded me of like smothering them with a pillow. <laughs> And so I would usually go on to tell a story I said, I told you about Lucy, and I said, a lot of times people will just name their inner critic, and they'll give them a persona, sometimes a wardrobe, you know, a, a sensibility, and then the question is, can you be present with that voice, neither letting them take over, nor hating them and fearing them? So it's, it's this um, moment's recognition. This is what's happening right now. I see you. And then there's a choice. Do we want to go for it or not? So the experience of anger, bitterness, all of that fits in the same way. Hating it, fearing it, feeling it shouldn't be there, disparaging yourself going on a rant, you know, meditating for more than 40 years, I shouldn't feel this anymore. Spent $10,000 in therapy just last year, I shouldn't feel this anymore. <laughs> it doesn't help, you know, so it's too bad, I say, because it comes so readily, you know. If that was the answer to being torn apart by anger and having our lives made very, very small by bitterness, that would be great. We already know how to do that so easily. But it's not the answer. You know, it just gets us into this kind of compounded world of anger and aversion and fear and anger and aversion and fear toward the anger and aversion and fear and then more anger and, you know. So um, that's why we call this an experiment in being different. But that doesn't mean that what we're feeling is bad, ever. Could I say just one simple sure. thing? Just in the, in the social science world, just they try to divide anger up into constructive and destructive anger. And there's been research a little bit on the differential effects. Anger, when directed to solve a problem, can have some value, and that's constructive anger. So if somebody's trying to hurt your kid, it's, a, it's useful to get angry to fuel you to do something about it. If, if there's an injustice, anger can be the first note that something's wrong and you need to do something about it. So constructive anger is a, va is a very valuable tool for awareness and for making decisions about something that needs to be handled that you want, you need to bypass like the long reasons, um, should I, shouldn't I, you know, it, it's, it's a very useful tool. Destructive anger is anger that comes perseverative or is habitual or is about the past, and, and, and there's nothing constructive that it leads to, it's just, it's just a rumination, you know, it's just a, a habit pattern or a patterning. And, and so that's the way that the social science, it's a simple term, constructive deconstructive. The one, the one data point that always intrigued me was when they looked at even the effect of trauma on people, if six months after the experience happened, if anger is still predominant in the consciousness, that was the worst predictor of outcome. That sadness, fear, alienation, those are all, they're all part of it, but if anger was a very strong part of the experience six months after, that predicted down the road a much worse outcome than if it wasn't there. 
and, and I'll just say one more thing. What you have to recognize, just as Sharon was saying, that anger is, is the result of adrenaline. Adrenaline is the spur of the fight or flight mechanism in the body. And so the thoughts that, that Sharon was explicating were simply thoughts of fight or flight. <coughs> That's all they were. And so what you have to recognize is you're really not even thinking. Like it's, it's your nervous system adrenalized, pushing you to very primitive but habitual thoughts that are not actually even yours, you know, that you haven't showed up yet. And so all those thoughts, every single species has at some level of I have to fight it, stop it, it's no good, I'm getting out of here, let me attack them. Those are just adrenaline. And so over time, I mean, this is just me giving a different language to mm -hmm. exactly mm -hmm. what she's saying. Over time, the limitations of our capacity to think affect us. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and that, that's, that's just my social science way of mm -hmm. saying the same thing.